meeting will come to order. If you will start off, please, with that wise. Repeat the uh, Pledge of Allegiance after me. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, the first item I have is to approve the agenda as it was published, so I'll entertain a motion to do that. I would make a motion to approve the agenda as published. Second. We move to second to approve the agenda as published. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And that motion is adopted. Thank you. Uh, public comment is next. I don't think we have any public comment at this time. So we'll move right on to action items. Uh, the first item we have is fiscal year 2021 budget hearing and adoption. And Lisa Howes will present that to us. Good afternoon, Lisa. Good afternoon. We are required by Idaho state law to have our board approve our annual um, budget. The fiscal cycle starts July 1st, 2020 and ends June 30th of 2021. Um, this budget document, if approved this evening, will be posted under the financial section of our website. Uh, it does require a motion by the board and the motion should be, you know, we approve the fiscal year 2020-21 Lake Ponderay School District budget. And what I'm presenting tonight is meant to be an executive um, kind of summary uh, filled with charts and tables and a narrative. This is very different than what we are required to send to the State Department of Education, which is hundreds of pages of long, and it's just general ledger account numbers and figures. There's, there's nothing, if you, know not, if, you, if you don't know what the general ledger account numbers mean, you're not going to be able to ascertain um, really much about our budget. Uh, and, and I would also say this is very different than how other school districts uh, present their budget. They just post what they submit to the State Department of Education, and it is um, our hope that though the community and stakeholders that are not familiar with um, school district lexicon will be able to pick this up, um, you know, a short document, 25 pages, and glean uh, pertinent financial information about the district. So I'm, I'm going to move through this quickly. The page numbers are on the top right, and I'll be referring to those for those that might be. Um, watching this live this is also posted under uh, on our district website uh, currently um, so it tells you on page one our meeting schedule which normally if we're meeting in person is held at the Pondere event center and our annual meeting which will be january 12th of 2021 the next few pages um, um, uh, delineate our schools and their grade configuration and the contact numbers, um, what our central office administrator contact numbers are, and then the financial team here also housed in the central office. On page three, it gives our certified administrators by school and then our, um, our directors of our various departments, facility, child nutrition, transportation, and, and information technology. We are, I still believe, the, law, the law, Lake Ponderay School District, the largest uh, employer in the county. We are an economic force in our county. Um, this overall budget, including the federal funds, um, is uh, $41.2 million. In terms of student population, we are the 22nd largest school district. The largest fund, which in governmental accounting, is called your general fund. 
is 36.8 million. 35% of that is through uh, voter approved two year maintenance and operations supplemental levy and July 1st, 2020 will mark us moving into the second year of that approved levy from March of 2019. Um, we don't have data from the State Department of Education for the fiscal cycle that we're in, but for last fiscal cycle, fiscal year 2019, we ranked 20, um, uh, 60, is it 63rd or 60, 63rd in terms of our per pupil spending at 9,011. Uh, this just gives you a visual on page four of the structure of the school district. We have a five person elected school board. And this is uh, now starting on page five through seven uh, is where I'm going to spend uh, the majority of the time tonight. Um, our budgeting cycle started fully nine months ago. And I mentioned that 34.5% uh, of our budget is through a voter approved property tax, which is $12.7 million per year. That's a fixed amount that can't be changed. Uh, before the outbreak of the pandemic in March of 2020, our legislators were already looking, although the Idaho economy uh, was robust, at different state revenue forecasts that for the first time, instead of having one forecast, they came up with three different forecasts, sort of the most conservative or um, the most uh, uh, optimistic. And that was because there was clear signals that some kind of mild recession was within the next 18 months. And we last fall, I presented um, information to you on that last fall. Then starting in early March of 2020, um, um, it became uh, clear as the economy shut down nationwide, including Idaho, that um, all the forecasting and the K-12 budget that was approved by the legislature in March of 2020, um, that they weren't going to be able to meet those expenses. And so in May, our governor for K-12 um, instituted a 1% holdback in the fiscal year we're in. So literally let 11 months into a 12 year fiscal cycle, a 1% holdback, which for us was about 230,000. And it is his full intent on July 1st. He can't do it before because the state's fiscal cycle is concurrent with ours. Um, to institute a 5% holdback, which for us is about $1.2 million. Um, on page six, um, the appropriation that the legislature approved in March of 2020 for K-12 was a 4.1% increase. For us, that translates to about an increase over the current appropriation of $920,000. But um, the 5% holdback um, put it going to be uh, administered through this executive order on July 1st, and then it must be approved by the legislature. Assumedly, um, they're not gonna have a special session, so when the legislature adjourns in January of 2021, um, it's more than offset by the $1.2 million holdback. Um, so, our supplemental levy, our property tax levy is 35% of our budget and our state appropriation for our general fund makes up basically the residual, almost two-thirds of our general fund budget. Um, we must, in Idaho, every taxing district, uh, present a balanced budget. So the blend of uh, the $1.2 million holdback and other portions of our um, funding model for K-12, most notably how tra pupil transportation is funded, 
when all of that was put together uh, and, and any kind of additional cost, we have cut out of our budget just shy of two, um, two million dollars. We have, for the first time in our negotiated agreement with our teachers, added some uh, furlough language that says if our reserves drop below 9.5%, which is $3.5 million, and if you ask why 9.5% um, um, to make monthly payroll and monthly accounts payable, we need that much in cash. Otherwise, we'd be in a position of having to borrow to make um, our monthly payroll or expenses. What was that 9.5% uh, comes out to about Th what? $3.5 million. Three point five, thank you. Um, we have cut in, diff in many programs, small and large, um, staffing-wise, about approximately five uh, FTE of teachers and approximately um, eight FTE uh, classified staff. We have also built into our budget $130,000 of contingency to see what happens in the fall and then another what we call a budget buffer of $200,000. So combined $330,000 of potential um, unanticipated expenses or it may be more likely um, less student enrollment than we projected when we were working through all of this we were projecting flat enrollment and of course this may be a real issue not only for Lake Pond Ray School District but nationwide um, I'm projecting that at the at the um, that we are in order to balance the budget on page seven at the top of um, we have used one-time reserve dollars in our general fund of $590,000. We started um, a reserve policy and I'll, I'll have to look to the next page. Um, probably about 16 years ago, we've been contributing to that by policy $100,000 a year during the apex of the Great Recession, we used for one fiscal year a million dollars. Um, the other times I can think we used uh, dollars of this magnitude, almost $600,000 uh, for next fiscal year was when Coldwater Creek declared bankruptcy and our enrollment uh, dropped significantly more than all of the buffers we had, um, $600,000. And other, the third time is $550,000 for some bus acquisition to try to get us back on the state's what's called the depreciation schedule. Um, something that really distinguishes Lake Ponderé School District is that we basically have no capital improvement funding um, through Idaho. Um, that must be voter approved either through what's called a bond or what's called a plant levy. Um, that's very different than almost every other state in the nation where there is a portion of property tax not only that funds um, the day-to-day -day operations but can also fund um, facility improvement or renovation. Um, we do have a 20-year lease purchase on this building we're sitting in now, and as of November of this year, we will own the building. Uh, we also, and the only other really capital expense that's budgeted for next year is in technology, and it's $343,000. This just shows you since we became a school district in July of 99, what's the history of our enrollment. And I would mention that there is a provision in the state's K-12 funding that if average daily attendance, because we are paid in Idaho on average daily attendance, not the number of students that show up, um, if your average daily attendance in the first nine weeks of school drops by more than 3%, then you are what's called protected. And so with our budget buffers, um, if we experience that, 
um, we would have about another $300,000 worth of cost that is not built into this budget uh, as it's presented. This just gives a visual of our major fund, our general fund's uh, reserve balance, and this is the board policy that I'm referring to, adopted uh, 15 years ago, and we have as um, in our budget workshops <coughs> decided to put on hiatus our contribution not only to our general fund reserve next year of $200,000, but also our plant fund reserve of $200,000 in order to balance the budget. Um, with the $590,000 we will use for next fiscal cycle, that will bring our fund balance to about 11%. Again, reminding you that the furlough provision kicks in at 9.5%. This visually shows you on the left on page 11, and we only have data for fiscal year 18, the state um, Department of Education, even though all the audits for fiscal year 19 um, were delivered to them in November of 2019, um, because of everything that's unfolded here in the spring, they, they haven't been able to put together the statewide data here. And really what I want to point out is what differentiates Lake Ponderay School District and narratively said we don't have any capital uh, budgeted this is for our general fund this is the state and we're pretty much you know percentage wise we align but here we don't have any debt because we don't have any bonds um, and we don't really have any capital improvements through plant facilities so where on the state side you can see it's oh boy is that blurry can you see that um nine <laughs> sixteen and a half percent and for us you know, it's, it's less than 2%. Um, right. In any given year, on average, 85% of the school districts in Idaho that can levy property tax um, dollars through bonds or plant levies do. Um, so we fall in the minority and we have, by and large, for the majority of the existence of our, uh, our school district. Um, this next page, page 12 shows you for last fiscal year, this is what the State Department of Education does for every audit received in this format. You can go to their website under the financial section and see um, just a very quick one page summary of uh, the expenses and revenues for um, the respective school district. This is on page 13, the document that's required for um, in, in this structure for all um, public uh, entities in Idaho, which has, shows you in the fourth column the proposed budget uh, we're discussing tonight for the general fund and in the eighth column, uh, those are all the other funds, uh, by and large, our federal funds. And then starting on page 14 through the end of the document, in just a quick program summary, it shows you on the categories, the major categories of expenses, um, defined by the state of Idaho's reporting uh, requirements and then starting on page 19 the federal funds uh, that are summarized on page 21. Those conclude my prepared remarks. Do you have any questions? Uh, thank you. Board members, any questions? Yes. Yeah, Alisa, could we could we back up to the to the to the presentation you made to us in, in uh, April, you know, when you, when you were projecting the um, the effects of the coronavirus for the rest of the uh, current school year. Sure. And um, th th there were some there were some really great numbers that you told me that you were that told us that you were going to hope to resolve here by the end of the fiscal year, um, such as the um, the pupil transport um, funds. Have, have we gotten any um, more information about? what happened if we were going to receive any relief on that um, so that's a great question and uh, uh, we have not so on page two of that presentation which again is I think still posted on our website on um, the five percent holdback that the governor will officially announce on July 1st um, districts in I think it was the first week of May received how the state intended to implement those. And there are about six major categories. The largest one being that the way the state funds teachers, 
that they are basically going to freeze that allocation module. So what's absent from that list of how they're going to come up with the 5% um, at the state uh, level uh, is transportation. But, yeah, let me keep going. So, but the way transportation is funded, it's sort of separate from every, everything else in the funding formula and it's done on a reimbursement basis. So we are paid in October annually for the expenses that were incurred and ended by June 30th. And it's based on sort of three tenants. One is um, the bus fleet and the depreciation money you receive. The second is something called a block grant. And then the third is predicated on um, salaries that are what are called, re they're reimbursable and non-reimbursable. The reimbursable for salaries for allowed position is 50% and miles driven. So of course we stopped driving miles on March 17th. And if we were to report, and we report, uh, you're required to do this in the end of August, the miles we drove and the salaries we paid, this estimate holds. But um, I personally have been in contact with Greg Wilson and the governor's office. I've personally been in contact with Senator Woodward, who sits on Senate Ed, um, the legislature, the governor's office is aware that this is a problem, and so much so that in the um, the press release from the governor's office to all the public school districts on the five percent holdback is a sentence: "We are aware that transportation is a problem, and we are continuing to work on this." So, um, there's been some dialogue that maybe they would pay on actual expenses and fiscal year 19 miles uh, driven. That for, for us, you know, I've run different scenarios for us. Uh, that, that would mean we would recoup this projected $573,000. So you're optimistic. We'll, I'm, we'll, I'm more optimistic than on April 14th because we now have um, what the 5% holdback contains and transportation was not a line item. So if they don't provide some flexibility, and of course, you know, people in my position around the state have, like, the governor's office is, is very clear that this is a problem. And um, there, I, I wouldn't see um, how they um, would be able to, um, a lot, um, allow school districts to report as you're required for this reimbursement form um, when that wasn't part of the directive of the 5% holdback. The other caveat is because I worked through the 2009 recession, um, you know, there were three different holdbacks over th almost, you know, bridging two and a half fiscal cycles. So we, in a, what we're presenting tonight, we we are not projecting another holdback at the state level. If that comes to fruition, you know, we're, we're having a different conversation. So at this moment, I'm, I'm more optimistic than I was in April. Yes. That's good. So another question, Mr. Chairman. Um, sure. uh, have, have you got a, a, a more firm figure on what we might recoup from the from the CARES monies? Right. That number actually is uh, very solid, what, which I gave you. Again, uh, um, uh, we thought it was going to be five hundred fifty-five thousand dollars, and now I think it's five thirty-five. The caveat there is the way things are scripted from um, the federal legislation is that private schools have access to our CARES Lake Ponderay school districts. Um, dollars and there's confusion if that's based on the free and reduced numbers in the private schools within the boundaries of our school district or their total enrollment and those um, the state has asked for more direction from the federal government and the federal programs director at the state level has not um, been able to give us any more information okay, another okay, question thank you. 
Yes, go ahead. The, either Lisa or Tom for this one. You, you know, you noted in, in your report here that 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 we're reducing our staffing. I think you said by five certified and eight classified positions. Yeah. Um, you know, can I can you, I can answer that, Gary. So uh, of the five teaching positions, um, one of them was uh, we we had a special education teacher who was out on medical leave, and we had hired another person. Um, Good news is that person is coming back, so we no longer needed the other person. So that's one of the FTEs. Um, we gave our instructional coaches, which we had to um, always give them the opportunity. Uh, we value our instructional program, but we gave them the opportunity, as we always do, to go back into the classroom when they want. If there is a position that is, um, um, I would say, they would desirable to them. And so our, our two instructional coaches have gone back into the classroom because two positions came open in their area into um, uh, San Juan Middle School. And so we have uh, decided to hire, hire one instructional coach to replace those two, and those other two will get a small stipend to continue their work working with Andrew. So th that was a save of a second FTE. Um, the third one is we had two we had two elementary schools that are no longer qualified for Title I, and they each had a Title I teacher. That's Northside Elementary and Washington Elementary have gone below the 35% on uh, free and reduced. So we have uh, lost a Title I teacher at Washington Elementary, and equivalent to that at uh, 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 Northside. So that's four. And then at Sandpoint High School, we adjusted. Um, we had a teacher who voluntarily went from full time down to four six, and there was two teaching periods. Another teaching period that we had added an extra teaching period for uh, a math teacher, and um, so we and then one at Clark worked through them adjusting their schedule. Um, a teacher is staying at 0.5, but instead of 0.667, it's going to be paid at 0.5. So there's one there so by recouping up to six teaching sections that's the equivalence of the five so there is no program that's being lost there is no teacher or we're not cutting in any way but we were trying to be efficient when we see a place that we yeah. could cut back we did so you know, the, 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 the two schools that are losing their title one monies right you know are, are we going to partially offset that with well, district funds to make sure we get this early childhood. Okay, there, there's a federal federal regulations that we cannot supplant that. Since they don't qualify, we cannot provide Title I services. But what we did do is, and I think we shared this in other workshops, is we restructure our paraprofessionals at every building. So um, <coughs> think of uh, paraprofessionals, teachers' aides, in three categories. One is for special education. One is funded under Title. Um, it, that's uh, for students uh, that are coming from uh, a free and reduced greater than 35%, some other criteria, and then just general uh, para support. So what we did is um, in the general para support, um, we reduced our paras um, and we came up and worked with the teacher association to come up with a formula that makes that equitable so that every school got X number of hours of para support based off of their student population outside of Title I. And so by doing that, um, they get X number of hours so then that principal has control with their staff of saying where do they need that most support. So um, I'll use Northside as an example. They, they had an, a, a, an employee that was funded under Title I that um, through this restructure they were able to keep that employee on, um, but she's not going to be a Title I Parapro. She is just going to be um, elementary support Parapro. And so um, we feel that we've done the best within the federal regulations to allow them to continue the services that they, they need to support the kids. So we feel very good about that, but that's something we don't have control over and we have to follow federal regulations. We cannot supplant and provide those services if those schools don't qualify. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate it very much. A very nice uh, presentation. Uh, we have a couple of members of the public that came in, and you missed the comment period earlier. But if you are here and would like to comment on the budget that was just presented, you're welcome to do so.
Thank you for that. I don't have any comments. Okay. In that case, I will, like I will entertain a motion to approve the budget. I would make a motion that we approve the budget presented for Lake Andre School District 84 for budget year 2020 to 21 and adopt what was presented today. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve the 2020-21 budget as presented to us this evening. And we'll have a roll call vote on that. Roll call vote. Trustee Superger? Aye. Trustee Decker? Aye. Trustee Lewis? Aye. Chair Kelly? Aye. Thank you. And that motion is approved on a unanimous basis. Thank you very much, Lisa. Welcome. Thank you. And I'd just like to say so much work has gone into this, and we've had this on our schedule for the last at least three months or so, and uh, I just want to comment her and you for putting this thing together, especially under the circumstances where we have so many unknown factors. We do have that. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, next, we have the alternate authorization of teachers new certificate summer for a summer tiger yeah I can address it could be elementary school yeah um, so um, summer uh, is hired as a assistant uh, principal uh, dean of students um, at Kootenai Elementary uh, she is finishing up her administrative certificate so she does not have that so she was hired on an alternate authorization and she is working through that she will be finishing up her uh, coursework this summer and she will then be uh, doing her intern um, and so uh, she was given three years to complete that and she's on track to do that but uh, we always have to continue that uh, her, uh, authorization by the board to let her question yes okay. yeah does, does, does she need it you know an administrative credential for this that's what she's working towards that's what she's working yeah. right so she is she has her teaching she's been a special education teacher and she's working on her administrative and is about ready to finish that up so I know okay I'll entertain a motion to serve this I would make a motion that we approve the alternate authorization teacher to new certification for summer tiger I second. Uh, it's been moved and second that we approve this authorization as stated. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 That motion carries. Thank you. Next, we have permission to use school equipment for summer football competition. Yeah, um, that's something you do every year. It's a little different this year because there may not be a football camp and you may not use that equipment. Um, that is still to be determined, but if it is, the Idaho High School Activity Association says that the school board must approve to use that equipment outside of the school uh, season. And so uh, at this time, I don't know that there is a scheduled camp or they will be using that, but um, we thought we would put it on there like we do every year, just in case. So that, that's it. Case will entertain a motion to approve it. Go ahead, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. I, I, I'd like to move that we uh, allow the school equipment to be used for summer football competitions. Second. I was going to move the second that we grant permission to use school equipment for summer football competitions. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, I just have one question, and that's about, of course, sanitizing the equipment. Right. And that's why we're not using it right now um, so you know but if that happens yes that it would, we would have to follow the protocol that would be set up and how I'm not sharing equipment I mean that's the one part about it um, yeah. that that's really keeping that social distance and, and that's in here the sanitizing uh, yeah that's in some uh, National Federation of High School documentation that comes through the IHSA that gives us guidelines on how to do that so okay thank you any further discussion no. well it's been moved and second that we approve this all those in favor of the motion please say aye aye aye, aye. aye that motion Thank you. I think we're down to announcements. No, I think nope. I'll consent make a motion agenda. to approve the consent agenda. Second. Oh, consent agenda. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. 
<laughs> Sneaks in. Okay. Do I have a second on the consent agenda? Yeah, he, he jumped in right away. Let's you move to a second that we approve the consent agenda. That was written here. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now, we're done with the consent agenda. Yeah, I'll start. Um, uh, I heard Pearlie talking about the Clark Fork High School graduation earlier, and I just want to give kudos to the entire staff at Clark Fork uh, High School. That was my first graduation that I got to partake in, and I sent them an email the next morning thanking them for welcoming me into the community, and uh, I appreciated their teaching staff's enthusiasm. They were uh, social distanced in a section by themselves, but all had different types of noisemakers and uh, musical oh. instruments to make it a, a very joyous uh, celebration. Um, you know, uh, Principal Kemi did a nice job of uh, having some tents set up for the graduates that they were sitting under out in the parking lot. I appreciated the uh, cooperation understanding of the parents that everything went well, and they ended the evening with a uh, so fireworks show. And I do have to say that their new math teacher um, is multi-talented, that I didn't know that he was oh. also a can sh shoot out fireworks. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, at Clark Fork, you get to do uh, yeah. a little bit multiple, of everything. Multiple, multiple things, things, yes. So, I remember um, the year I taught out there. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. Multiple things. Um, San Juan High School graduation as well then, Friday night. Um, uh, I, I've heard nothing but just um, accolades to the San Juan High School staff and Principal Miles on uh, what they did to, uh, given the circumstances, to celebrate the, the students. Um, uh, you know, between live streaming it, which uh, people could stay at home and watch it, because I've had people tell me that it, they had the best view in town by <laughs> sitting there, uh, sitting in their car with their windows up if they wanted to. It was on uh, 1400 AM. Um, and then we also had rented two Jumbotron screens that were on two sides there that pe people could see it if their view was somewhat blocked. Um, and um, so anyway, uh, yeah. Thanks, Gary and, and Lonnie, for being able to attend that. Um, it was uh, meaningful, and Perky for Perley for being at Clark Forks. Uh, but uh, anyway, we uh, uh, have had a lot of accolades, and so I think we have sent our seniors off um, as best we could during these circumstances. And then uh, Monday night, the 15th, is uh, LPO's graduation, and that is going to be indoors. Uh, we're holding our breath that uh, Governor. Um, yeah, little stage four takes us to stage four. Yeah. That was the purpose of moving that one. Um, they have 19 graduates, um, and they have an approved plan with uh, social distancing and mass and limited number of uh, uh, guests coming. But uh, anyway, so um, it, so I, I couldn't be more pleased on how hard the staff worked to celebrate those seniors. So um, uh, a little update. Um, uh, the governor's task force on school reentry, kind of, I'll, say, I'll call it the governor's task force, along with the State Board of Education, um, uh, met for the second time Monday morning. Um, they have, uh, are sticking to their timeline that a criteria probably won't be coming out till June 30th. Um, they did break into five subcommittees, and those five subcommittees were. Um, Dealing, one committee is going to be trying to answer or deal with liability issues of opening schools. Um, one is on school operations. One is on student learning. One is on uh, staffing, taking care of staff. And the other, they call it a toolkit. And I think that might be just resources and, and what we would need. So um, we have two representatives from North Idaho that are sitting on those subcommittees. Um, the superintendent, um, Steve Cook from Coeur d'Alene School District, and uh, the new superintendent at Post Falls, Dean and Alvarado. So um, they keep us well, you know, we're now not meeting every morning at 8, but we're meeting twice a week, um, with one of those meetings being with Panhandle Health uh, Director, too. So feel very connected regionally with um, the other superintendents. So more to come when those committees are going to recommend their proposals and at this point in time again I wish I could say I think this is what they're going to do but I don't and I think it's too early to project that out there um, yeah, sometimes it's like the telephone game if I were to say something people yeah. are going to hear it's only what they want to hear and then it's going to be uh, uh, done to you know 
the decision has been made and it has not. We're still waiting for that criteria. Is, um, do you yeah. have a sense of uh, if a, a criteria is established that it's going to be uniform statewide? Even you know, I don't, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't think so. I think yeah. they're going to give some flexibility dependent upon what's happening in your own community. Um, and you know, there be probably people on both sides of that fence. Uniformity yeah. makes it easy. Well, I can't because, or we're going we're to be sitting here making a tough decisions based off of what's happening in it's our community. Yeah. And, I, and I really kind of appreciate that a little bit. Um, yeah. We, uh, I do have a phone call uh, with um, uh, Sean Q um, Wednesday for me uh, to just talk to her as a representative on the State Board of Education to give her my input and I want to keep that dialogue and I appreciate sure. her being on there but I think the State Board needs to hear of uh, some of the challenges that are going to be coming up and uh, I will be reaching out to community members uh, parents and getting some feedback but more so will be coming probably the end of July and August when we yeah. have more information exactly the way things are going to look so okay. um, and I guess the only other announcement is, is that we have slowly opened up our facilities for activities um, with a pretty, you know, strict guideline. Um, you know, Kelly's daughter went to volleyball camp today and she said it was very strict social distancing and very, you know, criteria and sanitization. And I, I'm very uh, proud that, you know, I know at Clarkport we've got some open gym basketball going on. And, uh, there, there's criteria that's been set for each stage. So, um, you know, we're slowly opening up, but um, also being responsible. So, those are some announcements I have. Okay. Thank you very much. Jason, you have a hand for it? Oh, yeah. um, no, it's pretty quiet, but <laughs> we have, we've gotten to hire a couple people. So, you heard Tom say that there were, uh, you know, some people that came into the middle school who were instructional coaches, so we feel very fortunate. Uh, of course, Jackie Crossham got hired by at Northside um, to be the principal there, and so and then we had another uh, retirement and um, another person leaving. So through some shifts and things, and then hiring one person, um, and then we also had both instructional coaches, which I feel great. They're coming back, and I've worked with both of them before, with Kathleen Olson and Kathy Farmer, and I feel like we're getting them back even better because they've been <laughs> so well trained by Andrew now. So it's great. So yeah, we're excited. We're excited for the good people on staff. Do you have any questions? Nothing at this time. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our next item, which is uh, executive session. I uh, will make a motion that we uh, move into executive session as provided for in Idaho Code, Title 74, Section 206, Subsection 1B, to consider the evaluation, dismissal, or disciplining of, or to hear complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual agent, or public school student. Second. It's been moved a second that we go to executive session. Is stated. Uh, any discussion on that? Uh, roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Trustee Superberg? Aye. Trustee Decker? Aye. Trustee Lewis? Aye. Chair Kelly? Aye. Thank you. Okay, we'll adjourn to the executive session.